And since Silver refuses to put his money where his sabermetrics are and prove he's less dumb than traders, we've decided to do it for him in our new weekly segment, Models versus Markets. Now, this is going to be fun. This is your reward for sticking around for the whole crane interview. In Models versus Markets, we use 538's latest forecast to build actual live portfolios to exploit what their model says are missed priced contracts on prediction market predict it. With the Democratic primaries and caucuses now set to begin, our first portfolio will involve the races in the first four states, Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and South Carolina. In each of those states, you have four candidates with non-negligible odds of winning, which gives us 16 outcomes, each of which we can bet on or against. So really, there are 32 choices in where we allocate our money. So we put $100 in a predicted account just for the occasion. And to build this Clash of the Titans portfolio, we use the same Kelly criterion that Professor Crane discussed. This is a method devised by John Kelly at Bell Labs in the 1950s, if you're curious, which takes a set of probabilistic forecasts, in this case, 538's odds of each candidate winning each of these states, and uses them to exploit what those forecasts indicate to be inefficient pricing, in other words, odds that are too long or too short, being offered on those outcomes, whether by a bookmaker, a casino, or in this case, a prediction market. So if 538 says Biden will win Iowa and predict it shows Sanders leading, you'd buy both Biden to win and Sanders not to win. But it goes further than that. If both sources say Sanders will win, but predict its price, in other words, Sanders likelihood out of 100 is higher than 538's odds, you'd actually still buy Sanders not to win. Even though predicted traders in that instance would be agreeing Sanders is most likely to win, if 538's lower odds are set correctly, then you'd be overpaying to go long Sanders. So instead, you want to scoop up that relative bargain on the odds of his not winning. The larger the discrepancy between the forecaster's odds and the market price, the greater percentage of your bankroll it prescribes allocating to each position. Now, Kelly technically envisions making each of these bets in sequence rather than doing all in a batch. So this is not a perfect implementation of the criterion, but should still be about as good a method as any to determine if there is actual, actionable, useful intelligence in 538's ballyhooed work product beyond what the dumb, dumb mansplainers spit out via their trading activity. Now, we made our initial allocations based on this criterion last Wednesday, January 22nd at around 10 a.m., at which point these were 538's and predict its odds for the top four candidates in the first four states. You can see that some of the discrepancies were significant, and in only half the states did predict it in 538 even agree on the identity of the frontrunner. So unless 538 is useless, there is money to be made here. Specifically, and here's the math part, Kelly tells us that the fraction of our bankroll to invest in a proposition calculated as F prime should be B times P minus Q over B, where B is the net odds being offered, P is the actual or alleged odds of the proposition happening, in our case taken from 538, and Q is the odds that it doesn't happen, or 1 minus P. The result was this. Behold, 538's predicted shopping list as of 10 a.m. on January 22nd. You'll notice we're betting against every frontrunner, a theme we'll come back to in a minute, most heavily against Biden in South Carolina and Sanders in New Hampshire. 538 actually has these two leading those respective states, although they had it as nearly a four-way tie in New Hampshire, bizarrely. But the point is predicted as showing the front runners as consistently stronger than 538 is. In other words, the market says there's much less chance of an upset. Kelly, in turn, tells us that if 538 is smarter, we need to load up on those underpriced underdogs and fade the hell out of the front runners. So that's what we did. We weren't able to fill every position at the last trade price used to calculate the Kelly allocations, which led to a leakage of $3.52 in constructing the portfolio. So we'll later synthetically add that back so that 538 is not unfairly dinged for the bid-ask spread. So it's been a few days since we unleashed the full fury of 538's soothsaying on Predict It. And how are we doing so far? Uh, not, uh, Not well. We are not doing well. Let's start in Iowa where caucus goers are getting ready to caucus go. Traders have Sanders as a weak front runner at 45% to win and have since moved him up to 60%. So our short position here is as guided by 538's forecast that Sanders only had a 23% chance killing us. 538's updated forecast has begrudgingly moved him up to a coin flip with Biden. So silver is moving and predicts its direction, but traders have been days to weeks ahead of 538 on this and it is wrecking our portfolio. Things are even worse in New Hampshire, where 538 said Biden and Sanders were equally likely just below 30. 
Predict it had Sanders much higher at 57, so naturally we bet big against him. But since then, his odds have only gone higher, now 75%. 538 here again begrudgingly moves towards predict its number, just much more slowly. They've moved Sanders up from 29 to 41%, still way below PI's forecast. And how about our biggest position? Going against Biden in South Carolina, where predicted traders gave him an 81% chance of victory and 538 only 63%. Here we're actually up a little, as Biden's predicted price has dwindled from 81% to 75%, still a strong favorite, but less overwhelmingly so. And finally, in Nevada, we are getting pummeled for going against the co-front runners Sanders and Biden. 538 had this as a pretty competitive four-way race when we took our positions, whereas Predict It was showing a clear two-man race. Traders have only grown in their conviction since then, pushing Sanders and Biden's combined price to well over 90% and bleeding yet more money from our coffers. And here we see the same dynamic over the last several days. 538 is gradually following Predict It's price, but much more slowly and with less conviction. And those are the kinds of insights or counter insights that Kelly is meant to capture. You need to not only be right, but to be more right, more accurate in terms of your level of conviction, and you need to get there before the counterpart that you're trading against. So, so this could still go a lot of ways, of course, and we will continue to update you on the portfolio's performance. For now, if you like 538's forecast, you'd still feel very good about the current positions. Were you to rerun the model today, you'd arrive at slightly different allocations, but the themes are the same. If predicted is right, then 538 is undervaluing Bernie in three out of four states, but it may not be a Bernie thing, but rather a front runner thing. The one state where 538 is undervaluing Biden, assuming predicted is right, is South Carolina, where Biden is the favorite. So the common theme across every state is that 538 is more mealy-mouthed, weaker of conviction, and tending more toward that easy intra-race calibration that Dr. Crane discussed, where all candidates would have a one over N chance of victory. That doesn't mean the 538 is wrong. If the front runner status in each of these races is more tenuous than traders think, there's a good chance that one or more of the increasingly out of favor predictions in our portfolio will hit pay dirt and generate an outsized gain. But for now, the 538 model is taking it on the chin and hemorrhaging money. If you would like to play along at home, we will post the spreadsheet showing the current odds of both 538 and predicted in these races, along with the calculation of the current optimal allocation on oldbull.tv. So check that out if you like 538's forecasts and want to use it to scalp the predicted rubes. In the meantime, we'd like to reiterate our invitation to Mr. Silver or any of his compatriots to join us and offer their perspective on the early primaries and the predictive capacity of models versus markets. That's all we've got for you today. Be sure to check out next week's episode when we'll sit down with Joey Krug, the co-founder of the Augur Project, a fully decentralized blockchain-based prediction market. We may also do some kind of live stream on Iowa caucus night next Monday, but do not hold us to that. Either way, make sure to subscribe to this channel while you're here so you don't miss out on any of it. And if you're listening to the audio version, come join us at oldbull.tv to subscribe. Follow us on Twitter at Bold Bold TV for the equally indispensable content we simply can't squeeze into the broadcast. We will see you next time. Thanks for joining us.